With your wall studs located, use your floor plan to identify where each wall cabinet will be installed and how each cabinet matches up to the wall studs. Try to ensure that each cabinet can attach to at least one wall stud. Always measure the distance using the front frame width of the cabinet and not the back end of the cabinet due to the front face frame reveal of each cabinet. The first cabinet that you'll want to install is the corner cabinet. The corner cabinet is the keystone for your entire cabinet installation. This kitchen does not have a corner wall cabinet, but the following illustrations detail how you install different types of corner cabinets. Before you begin, you need to mark the wall stud locations to the back of the wall cabinets. Measure from the corner to the first wall stud and transfer this measurement, minus one inch, to the back of the wall cabinet. Repeat for the next stud location. Now, measure down two inches from the top of the cabinet back and up two inches from the bottom of the cabinet back and intersect these measurements with the stud location measurements. Drill through the wall cabinet back using a 3 32nd inch drill bit. Repeat the process for the adjacent corner back panel. Raise the cabinet into place resting on the ledger rail and fasten the cabinet to the wall with a number 8 by 2.5 inch pan head trim screw, but don't fully tighten. Check for level and shim where necessary. If your kitchen includes a blind wall cabinet instead of a wall corner cabinet, consult your design to determine the distance the cabinet is to be installed from the wall corner. Place the next cabinet below where it will be installed and repeat all measuring and pre-drilling as previously detailed. Raise the cabinet into place on the ledger rail and fasten to the wall, but again, don't fully tighten the screws. Check for level and shim the wall where necessary. For this kitchen, we'll begin with the first wall cabinet to be installed and we'll repeat the measuring, pre-drilling, and installation as detailed in the corner example, but again, don't fully tighten the screws. Carefully align the face frames of each cabinet using a C-clamp or a quick grip type tool. Then, drill a 3 32nd inch pilot hole in three places along the hinge side of the interior of the cabinet face frame, followed by countersink drilling. The hardwood face frames will offer resistance to the screws and it's a good idea to coat screw threads with beeswax to limit the resistance when securing with trim screws. For appearance, you can hide two of the screws behind the hinge plates. Continue around the room until all the wall cabinets have been installed. Return to each cabinet for one last check of level and plumb and then tighten all the screws. The same method of attachment is also used for fillers. Because cabinets are available in 3 inch wide increments, you may need to install a filler to complete the dimension of your wall space. Fillers may need to be cut to size to fill an open dimension between the cabinet and the wall or between two cabinets. Hold the filler in place where it will be installed. On the back side of the filler, mark the top and bottom where it needs to be trimmed. Connect the two marks using a straight edge and draw a line to create the cut line. Once cut, install as you would securing two cabinet face frames together. You may order your cabinetry with factory finished sides or with loose end panels for a furniture look or for stack cabinetry applications as shown in this kitchen for field installation. The following steps will help ensure a professional looking finished product. Step number one. Gently sand the back of the end panel to rough up the surface for best adhesion. Wipe the surface clean after sanding. Step number two. Position the end panel over the side of the cabinet to dry fit. If cabinet is shorter than the end panel, scribe a pencil line on the back side of each panel to determine the trim line. If the end panel is being applied to a base or tall cabinet, also scribe a pencil line to determine the toe kick notch cut line. Step number three. Cut the end panel to required height or a toe kick notch if applicable using a table saw, circular saw, or jigsaw. It's recommended to use a fine cut melamine saw blade. You may also need to scribe the wall side of the panel if the wall is not straight. To help prevent chipping, it's recommended scoring both the face and back side of each panel with a utility knife at the cut lines. Step number four. End panels may be applied using contact cement or panel adhesive that's available at most home center or hardware stores. Apply adhesive per the manufacturer's application instructions. Depending on the adhesive you've selected, it can bond immediately and no additional fasteners are necessary. Other adhesive products may require brad nails to secure the panel along with the adhesive. 
Your design drawings will include installation notes so you'll know what cabinets will receive end panels. And of course, your designer is always available to answer any questions. At this point, we recommend installing all the shelves and doors before proceeding to base cabinet installation. And feel free to remove the temporary ledger rails.